Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Bridge Asbury's Expression of Modern Worship. My name is Robert Mercer, and I'm so glad that you have chosen to join us here at the Bridge. If you're worshiping online with us, we give you a special, special welcome. Today in the life of the church is a special Sunday. Each year on the first Sunday of October, it's World Communion Sunday. Now, this started with our Presbyterian friends, Presbyterian USA friends, in 1939. They had this idea that all of their churches would celebrate communion on the same day. It overflowed into other denominations, and now it's around the world where people of the Christian faith gather together on this Sunday and break bread together which is such a wonderful testament of our faith, something that draws us together as Christian people. Here at our church, we believe that everyone has something to bring. So let's give Jesus our best. As we begin our service this morning, I wanna invite you to pray. If you feel comfortable, just hold your hands out and lift your palms up as an expression of there's something bigger at work here than just us, that the Holy Spirit, that God is within our midst. Let's pray together. Oh God, we thank you so much for the opportunity to come together this morning to worship you. Oh God, as we gather around your table to feast, we pray that you will connect us in a way that brings people together. Oh God, hear our worship as an offering of praise. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to invite you to stand and sing together. If you're online, let's turn the music up. Let's sing out.
of every song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Jesus Jesus, the name above every other name Jesus, the only one who could ever say Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe none beside you open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me Jesus the name above every other name Jesus the only could ever say worthy of every breath we could ever breathe we live for you oh we live for you holy holy there is no one like you there is none Oh
Good morning. I'm so happy to be here. I didn't realize my name was going to be up on the screen, but I am Tori Redman. I'm a member at Asbury, and my family and I have attended the bridge for many years. So I'm happy to be here today to do our scripture reading, which comes from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 6, verses 22 through 24. The eye is the lamp of the body. Therefore, if your eye is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light in you is darkness, How terrible that darkness will be. No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be loyal to the one and have contempt for the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. Oh God, add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and understanding of Scripture. Our hearts and minds are open. Amen. As you came in this morning, uh, hopefully you were able to get uh, communion elements and also a connection card. The connection cards were kind of in your seat. If you didn't get communion elements at some point, you know, we're okay with movement in here and getting a little bit loud. And so feel free to get up. They're right there on the back table. You can grab one. Also grab a connection card too because I'll ask you to fill that out later in our time together. Uh, Today we start a brand new sermon series called The Bridge. Have you ever wondered why we call this service The Bridge? Well, you know, in our lives we are continually working on becoming the person that God wants us to be. Uh, John Wesley, the founder of the Methodist movement, said Christians should be moving forward to perfection. Man, what does that mean? (laughs) You know, I think that what Wesley was saying and what, what Jesus is teaching us in the Sermon on the Mount is that we are continually called to bridge the gap. To bridge the gap between how we really live and how God wants us to live. Uh, to, to help wrap our minds around this for just a minute, let's think of actual bridges. You know, bridges allow us to pass over impassable obstacles. In the same manner, there, there's a gap between who we actually are and who God wants us to be. And our job is to bridge that gap. And this has been a trouble spot for humans since the beginning of time, since Adam and Eve. We've struggled to live in ways to help us flourish. Jesus came along to show us how to live in healthy relationship with God and with each other. Jesus came to bridge that gap between humanity and God. Jesus' life and teaching along with the Holy Spirit helps us to follow the path in which God would like for us to go. Now, during this series in October, we're going to be looking at many different scriptures and, and a lot of Jesus to help show us what it means to be the bridge, what it means to bridge the gap. Today's scripture that Tori read for us came from the Sermon on the Mount. Now, the Sermon on the Mount is recorded in Matthew uh, chapters five through seven. 
Uh, Jesus delivered this message close to the beginning of his ministry where he was already attracting thousands of followers. The Sermon on the Mount is by far Jesus' longest explanation of what it looks like to live a life of faith. In many ways, Jesus' teachings during the Sermon on the Mount represent the major details of the Christian life. For example, in these three chapters, you'll find subjects on prayer, on justice, on caring for the needy, on healing, on handling the religious laws, on judging other people, on salvation, and so much more. It contains both the Beatitudes and the Lord's Prayer. Jesus' words are practical, they're concise. He masters the art of helping people understand what living as people of faith is like. In the end, Jesus is clear to his followers they should live noticeably different than the culture around them. His followers are told to hold a much higher standard than the culture. Uh, in the Sermon on the Mount and all throughout scriptures, you'll, you'll find scriptures like this. You've, ser- you've heard it said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, you must not oppose those who want to hurt you. If people slap you on the right cheek, you must turn the left cheek to them as well. Uh, The scripture that we read today, Jesus is contrasting motives. Why do people do the things that they do? And he was using the illustration of an eye. If your eyes are healthy and you're looking at the right things, then you will see the light. But if your eyes are unhealthy and you're looking at the wrong things, you will see darkness. Uh, One of John Wesley's quotes was, one's soul will be full of holiness and happiness as long as their eyes are fixed on God. When one's eye is bad, then bad things happen. And then the end of this scripture that that we read, in verse 24, it says, no one can serve two masters. Either you hate one and love the other, or you'll be loyal to one and have contempt for the other. You cannot serve both God and wealth. You know, it's important for us to put scriptures into context. Uh, You know, when, when we translate, I think we talked about this last week a little bit too. When we translate... Uh, the uh, Greek language or Hebrew language into English, we we lose some of that translation. That happens when you do that with any language. Anything that's written in one language and translated to another, you lose a little bit of the language. What Jesus is saying here in regards to the word hate, which is used many times throughout Scripture, is not hate like we would think. Uh, For example, in the Old Testament, it says that Jacob loved Rachel but hated Leah. Now, Jacob didn't hate Leah like we think of hating somebody. It just meant that Jacob loved Rachel a little bit more than he loved Leah. And then when you look at the rich young ruler in Luke, and the rich young ruler was saying, what do I need to do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus, you remember what he said. He said, you can sell all you have. Well, first he said, you must love the Lord God with all your heart, soul, mind, keep all the commandments. And he goes, I've done all that. And he goes, then you need to sell all you have and follow me. And he couldn't do it. It's not that he hated Jesus. He just loved his stuff more. And what we have to do is do the hard work of bridging that gap between the the way we are and the stuff we love to where God wants us to be. We really struggle when it comes to fixing our eyes 
on Jesus, so to speak. We tend to focus on our outward symbols of faith rather than what is in our hearts and inside of us. You know, we, we go to church, we, we wear Christian clothes and we wear crosses and, and we think that that is participating in our, in our faith. Dallas Willard referred to this as barcode faith. He noted that it registers when, when you scan a barcode, the, the register doesn't decipher the difference between the product and the barcode. So he said, if the ice cream sticker is on the dog food and the dog food is ice cream, so far as the scanner knows, that's the way it is. Does that make sense? You know, the, he, the scanner only knows what it scans. It could be totally different on the inside. And, and Willard says that our understanding of faith can be a lot like this. He says, the theology of Christian Trinket says there's something about the Christian that works like a barcode. Some rituals, some beliefs, or some association with a group affects God the way the barcode affects the scanner. We live in a way that we suggest that God is just this big cashier and will scan us. You know, we go to church, beep. <laughs> we, we, we post a scripture to social media, beep. You know, we wear a Christian t-shirt to school, beep. And we all know that God doesn't work like that. This is some of what Jesus was addressing at the Sermon on the Mount. Being a follower of Christ is serving God with everything we do, not just the rituals we perform. It's about bridging the gap between who we are and who God wants us to be. Bridges are complicated structures. Uh, and it's not easy to build. It took eight years, uh, five major contractors, and the relentless labor of 432 construction workers each day to build the Tower Bridge in 1886. The Golden Gate Bridge took just over four years. Construction began in January of 1993, and it was not open to automobile traffic until May of 1937. The Sydney Harbor Bridge uh, started in 1924, and it took 1,400 people, eight years, and $4.2 million in 1932 to build. Building our spiritual bridges take just as much work and just as much effort. We'll have setbacks for sure. We will uh, build some things and have to tear those down because they're not quite working the way they should. And, and I don't know about you, but I have felt so many times like the person I am and the person that I should be, there is such a wide gap that sometimes I think, what's the point? You know, we've talked about in here from time to time that we need to make 1% changes, small changes in order to grow. We have a culture of we want it now. Do you remember in Willy Wonka, uh, do you remember what uh, Violet said? I want a Oompa Loompa now. We're like that. We, we want to come to know Jesus and be a Christian follower now. You know, we, we want things in our schools, in our offices, in our world to be fixed now. When the reality is it takes hard work, small changes over time to affect us so that we can grow into the person God expects us to be. And God doesn't expect us to be perfect. Did you hear that? God doesn't expect you to be perfect. God expects us to be faithful. To be faithful. 
And we bridge the gap by making these small 1% changes that over time can get us closer to being the person that God created us to be. Now, I want to look at a couple things, a few things to help us bridge the gap. I'm calling this the, uh, the three R's to bridge the gap. The three R's. So educators, this one's for you. Uh, the first R is reflect. It is nearly impossible to grow if we don't take time to slow down and reflect on what's going on in our lives. Uh, one of my favorite movie franchises is Shrek. Uh, I could watch almost all of them at, at any moment if they are on. But one of my favorite characters is Lord Farquaad. You remember Lord Farquaad in the first Shrek? He is just fantastic, and anything that John Lithgow does is, is okay with me. But if you remember, there's a scene of Lord Farquaad with this, with this uh, magic mirror, the mirror mirror on the wall, and he is trying to get reality from the mirror, but his ego is so large that he forces the mirror to lie to him. That's what we do with our lives. We try and convince people to tell us what we want to hear rather than what it takes for us to grow. Now, there are a variety of things that we can do to help us reflect on our lives and what's going on. Uh, for us Jesus followers, we have prayer and meditation. Uh, I have the privilege of serving with, with Robin White uh, on a daily basis. Her office is right next to mine. Robinson is in charge of our uh, spiritual formation here at the church. And the other day we were talking about uh, prayer and meditation and she said that we should each try to take 20 minutes a day and just sit in silence and listen for God. And I said, I don't know that I could do that for five minutes, Robin. I mean, if I sit down for 30 seconds, my brain's going, i got to cut the grass, i got to do this. And she said that she gets a word. And every time her mind starts wondering, she just says that word, and it reminds her to clear her mind and listen to what God is saying. You know, reflecting can really help us to discern where God is leading us. The first R is reflect. The second R is read. Uh, one of the things I love about uh, getting something new today is most things come with those quick start guides. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, we bought a Wi-Fi system uh, a couple years ago and it came with a quick start guide. So they mailed the box to us and we opened it up. I got the quick start guide out one, two, three, downloaded the app. We were up and running on Wi-Fi in about 20 minutes. It was fantastic, but it also has this manual with it. Now, the Wi-Fi was up and running, but man, there was so much that that thing can do to help keep our family safe that is not in the quick start guide. Now, our, our spiritual lives are kind of like that. We have these great resources that are quick start guides. The upper room is one of them. They are fantastic to help us jump into scriptures and begin to understand things. And I am not saying don't use them because I use one every single day. But what I am saying is the scriptures are the manual that has the deep stuff in it that can really help us to grow in exponential ways. Okay, the first R is reflect, the second R is, really, is read, and the third R is relationships. We were created to live life in communion with one another. And I use that word communion on purpose and not because it's World Communion Sunday. Communion is having a deep, intimate relationship with someone and also on a spiritual level. 
in order for us to bridge the gap between who we are and who God wants us to be, we have to be in relationship with each other. Uh, Did your parents ever tell you, uh, don't let your friend's bad habits rub off on you, or if your friends would jump off that building, would you do it? Uh, Or maybe you've said something similar to your kids, right? There's a lot of truth in that, isn't it? We, we really do pick up the bad habits of the people that we hang out with, but also we can pick up on some of the good habits with the people that we hang out with. Now, Jesus, you might be saying, look, man, uh, it's pretty clear in the scriptures. You kind of talked about it during the uh, Art of Neighboring series that Jesus ate with sinners. And that's absolutely right. But Jesus also had a close-knit spiritual community to walk with him. And let me ask you this. If Jesus, the Son of Man, the only sinless human being, needed a spiritual community to walk with him, why do we think that we don't? When it comes to bridging the gap, it can be overwhelming. But remember, we're not trying to build that bridge in one day. We're trying to make small 1% changes in our life that over time will compound and help get us closer to the way God wants us to live. So this week, I want us to take a pretty good look at these three. Uh, If you have your connection card, you can write it on the back. Reflect, read, and relationships. Reflect. If you don't spend time right now reflecting in life, which there's no judgment there, I'm not very good at that either. Don't go for 20 minutes. You'll never make it. (laughs) You know, maybe set your phone for five minutes and try and sit in silence and listen. And when it comes to doing something new, if you, if you have a habit, well, let's say you drink coffee and watch the news in the morning, how about turn off the news? Even if you don't reflect, that's probably a good idea. But how about drinking coffee and spending five minutes? Read. I have a challenge for you this week. The Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5, through seven, those three chapters have some of the richest information on how to live a Christian life. So this week, just read chapter five. You got all week. Small 1% change, changes. Now, if you're reading four and five chapters a day, you, you can come up with something else, right, to do your 1%. But if you're anything like me, just reading a few chapters in the morning might be a great start to digging into the Bible. And then relationships. Having a community of faith around you is one of the most significant ways that you can bridge the gap. We need to make our church community a priority in our life. We need to make it one of the things that we just don't miss. And, and I'm not saying that to get you to come to church because if, if this space isn't doing it for you, find somewhere. I'm saying it because it is truly the best way that we will learn and grow and bridge the gap and become the people that God wants us to be. Asbury's not perfect. We're far from it. Asbury's not the place for you if you want answers we have more questions and answers at this space, in this place. But I'll tell you what we are. We believe that everyone has something to bring. And we're going to give Jesus our best. That's what we're about here at the bridge. You know, Jesus lived life with a group of people uh, they ministered together, they worked together, they, I'm sure they fought together. You, you, 
you know, all those scriptures. I mean, Jesus said to Peter one time, get behind me, Satan, you know? Uh, and they ate together. Today we celebrate Holy Communion. And today around the world, there are millions of Christians celebrating this meal together. It is a time for us to come to the foot of the cross and remember what Jesus did for us. That he died for us. He died to show us a better way to live. And when Jesus was with his friends, it was the Passover meal. It was a meal that they had hundreds of times uh, uh, throughout their uh, existence as good Jewish people. Uh, and Jesus changed it. Jesus started mixing things up. And he took the bread. And he took it and he broke the bread. And he gave it to his disciples and he said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this and remember what I've taught you. Remember who you are. After supper was over, he took the cup and he raised it and he said, this is a sign of a new covenant the forgiveness of our sins, the forgiveness of the things that we do to keep us from God. <laughs> for you and for the world, every time you drink it, remember me. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine Make them be for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ so that we can be one with you, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world. In Jesus' name, amen. At the, here at, in the United Methodist Church, one of the things that makes us a little different from from some of our brothers and sisters is that we believe in open communion, which means we don't put any pre-qualifiers on communion. Uh, everyone is welcome at this table. And I wanna say that one more time. Everyone is welcome at this table, no matter who you are, no matter what you've done. The only thing needed to take this meal is to believe that Jesus might have something better for us in this life. I invite you to take the bread. It's on the bottom of the chalice if this is the first time you've been in since we've been doing communion this way. This is the body of Christ, which is broken for you. Take and eat. This is the blood of Christ, which is shed for you. Every time you drink it, remember me. Oh God, we are grateful to be able to have been fed at the Lord's table this day. We're humbled that as we take this communion, we know that millions of other Christians around the world are celebrating with us. Oh God, help us all, us here in this room, our brothers and sisters down the hall, our friends in ministry around the world to, to begin to bridge that gap between who we are and who you want us to be. Oh God, we pray this 
in the name of Jesus, who taught us to say as we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Once again, we're so glad that you have worshipped with us today. We hope that everyone will take our connection card. Uh, on the bottom, there's a place for you to fill it out and let us know that you're here. We want everyone to do that. Uh, for those of you who haven't been in our service, I like to say if it's kind of like the old pew pad that we used to do where we passed it down the aisle. There's a basket in the back, a little black basket. You can drop it in there or you can just leave it in your seat and we'll pick it up later. If you're visiting with us for the first time, we would love to know you're here. You can get a gift there at the Welcome Center. If you want to continue your worship through giving, there's a place you can leave your offering there in the back or you can give online as well. Let's stand together. Let's sing out. I searched the world But it couldn't fill me Man's empty praise The treasures that fade are never enough And you came along And put me back together And every desire Is now satisfied Here in your love Sing it with Oh, there's nothing Yeah. Hey. 
people of God, go from this place without any shame, timidity, or fear to bridge the gap. And if you want to take some bread home, this was just bought today. You're welcome to come and take some home. Have a great week. Bye-bye.